Welcome back to another episode of How Bad Can It Possibly Be? Today we are going to be looking at some clips that are sent in by you to me. If you want to join this kind of thing, make sure to post your mistakes, your deaths, everything that you want critique on. I don't want flex skills, I don't want 8 kill matches, this is not Thunder Show. We are trying to learn from the painful experience that is War Thunder. If you want to do so, you can go to my Discord down below. Go to the content review page and post a link in there. Preferably it's a real match like this one. But if you do record your replay, that's completely fine as well. As long as it's posted on YouTube so I can actually cycle through it. And I don't have to worry about having to rewind ever throughout the video. Because the replay system massively blows. Let's take a look at this game right here. I have not watched any of these videos yet. I just get some suggested to me. I scroll through them real quick to see if someone dies or not. So if I see you end the game gliding with like 6 or 7 kills. I'm not even going to look at it. Unless someone told me to do so. Now let's look at the LA5 clip that we have on our hands right here. We are already going 600 at 1400. If we dive on any of these guys we need to cut throttle. Because we are going to be locking up very severely. But that's for another time. P63, P51... Looking like a pretty solid choice. But this P40 right here. Are you going to go for him? Nope you are not. Keep eyes on him. Might look like he's RTB right now. He might come back to bite us in the ass later on. We are diving zero throttle. We are compressing. Just as expected. Now these two guys break off. You're not going to get the shot on this guy. But because you are compressing. You're probably also not going to get the shot on this guy. Are you going to go for it? Yeah you are. You're never taking that shot, even, even more so if you are whapping throughout it. Now, instead of this, you see this right here. 109 is on the FOU. This guy is about to start doing something. I would just start looping right here. Don't worry about the kill here. You're not going to get it. You're compressing too much. If you were in another plane that was actually able to shoot at high speed, go for it. But look at this. 109 has it covered because the FOU just kind of kills himself. Now you are looping, but you're still going up. And if you had done this earlier, you would have already been going down again. And you would have been able to put pressure on the P63 and the P36. Uh, the P51C, sorry. So we are diving in here. Doesn't really matter who you go for until this happens. You are still going for the P63. That's the first guy you are looking at. But this guy is closer. And he is behind the P63. Target prioritization. Go for the guy behind... And in this case, also go for the better plane. Now you are cutting throttle. You are trying to stay behind him, which is fair in games. You're trying to get on him. And then the P51 kind of gets in front of you. I'm not sure if this is actually target prioritization or neuron activation. But you set him on fire. P51 probably not going to enjoy that too much. And you transition over to the P63. Now you are not wapping. You're going into the vertical. Are you going to use flaps? Yes, you are. You are now just draining your balls completely. And th he will be able to go vertical versus you if he does it right. He does not. And he kind of just flails in front of your face. 109 also kind of there. I mean, you're just on the 6 now. He's messing up harder than you are. And you are going to get the kill here probably. Now you are struggling a little bit with aim. You get uh, some hits on him. You type crit. Maybe the 109 has it covered. But personally I would just spray this guy down right here before he arrives. You have time to go head on anyway. You're going too slow to do, really do anything. I would just try to kill this guy. And then you can 2v1 him. Because this looking hella, hella sus. Now you turn in. You type crit. You use flaps to turn here. You're already going 300. This P63 is going to ruin your day. That thing turns hella well. As you will see in a second probably. And then you reverse your turn. Never do this. Never ever do this unless you are in a position to do so. You are not. You're going 300. You are turning into a particular direction. He will have to do a full 360 to chase you. But what do you do? You turn the other way. Now he needs to do a 180. He's going to use tremendous... Yeah, there you have it. This was the big mistake. Yeah, th This right here probably got you killed. If you did everything perfectly, this still would have gotten you killed. Personally, just go for the P63. Don't worry about the guy on your ass. You're not going to be outturning him anyway. And you bled a bit of a speed. And yeah, there we go. We are now going to stall ourselves out in front of a plane that turns hella well. Doesn't really stall. 
And we don't have any speed to do anything here. He misses basically all his shots. We turn back into his guns for the second time. We don't line up anything and we just end up hanging in place. If you do want to do this kind of shot, at least line up your guns before he passes. Like try to aim up here so maybe he'll fly in front of you. But in general, P36s, you're not going to be out turning them in many monoplanes. A uh, bit of a risky one. We are completely stalled out. He's just going to loop on over and probably hose us down now. He's not actually doing anything. He's also stalling himself out. Looks like he's just flying with his mouse or maybe also with a controller. I am not completely sure. And he ends up turning in front of us again. In this kind of scenario, do not use your flaps. You are in a flat turn. You are in a raid fight, quote unquote. This is not going to get you anywhere. The boost you get from your flaps is going to be negated by the fact you are losing so much speed that you don't have the airflow to actually keep your turn up. So now you are hella slow. The P36 is coming back. Yeah. P63 is on our 6. And because we are going so slow through the extensive amount of flap usage. And holy mother of ping. What is this? How is that ever hitting us? It doesn't really matter. You were dead anyway. I mean panic shooting. Just desperation I guess. Can't really fault you for that. But yeah. Take away. Use your flaps less. Prioritize your targets well. And don't throttle drop when you're trying to out energy someone. Like 95% of times you are better off just webbing. In basically every scenario. Unless you are flying something like an I-225. But even then. You still want to web. Because you need the power. Unless position is so important that you need to kill them right there. Say you are in a dogfight with a worse turning plane. Less maneuverability. Less acceleration. And your only option is to slow down to get him pass in front of you. Sure, go ahead. But in most scenarios, just keep the weapon. Don't use your flaps too much until you try to get the shot. Prolonged fight, flaps, they don't improve your turn. I know that sounds funny. I know that sounds funny. Unfortunately, that's how it works. You are completely dead here. You, oh, you actually killed the guy. Now, this is actually fantastic. Oh, he just slams it into the ground. <coughs> Not sure who I needed to roast. You said it was fine to roast you. I should probably roast the P36. Oh, uh, P63. Absolutely fucking terrific. On to the next one. Yeah, see, this is what I do. I go to the end. I see that you are completely messed up. Let's take a look at it. Now, we are in a 1v5. I've not seen any of this. And I wonder how you take it. I hope you take it better than your mother does. But looking like the end, your mother probably takes it a lot better than you do. But hey, you might learn from the best. <laughs> Let's take a look. We are in the G2 Trop. We have gun pots. Not sure what the fuel amount is, but we'll see that probably in a second by your performance. First guy, absolute trooper here going head on with a 109 and he actually dodges. He is showing signs of brain activity. Keep this in mind. P51D, Crown X. Brain activity spotted. Now is it a D10, a D20 or a D30? I have no idea yet. I don't know what this matchmaker is. I did see an F82. It might be a D30 and due to the fact that the... Resolution here is so turbo ass that I can't see anything. I can't see what his camo is so I can't actually make out what plane he is flying. But it looks like he's not having a great time. He's going hella slow here. He's looking at someone else. It's a D5. This guy is an absolute non-issue. Also because he's back in a hangar. Now, he's about to have the same amount of game impact being dead as being alive. Because the D5 has absolutely, well, zero of it. And that's going to be kill number one. Fantastic. You help your teammate out. I have nothing to say here. Maybe you bled a little bit too much altitude. But that's really nitpicky. Because like your, your team is plentiful here. You are going for an easy kill. Uh, basically a secured kill. And this is something that you want to do. You want to dwindle the numbers down. Especially early game. And you have the position here to go back at altitude. Because you didn't waste all your altitude. He wasn't at like 2 kilometers. Completely fine. I'm just being an absolute asinine person. As I usually am. But hey. If I think something. I want to say it. Because that's what this video is about. Dirty Shaft 147. Thank you for making an appearance on my channel. Can you take it like your mother can? You are really learning from the best. Dirty Shaft. Now personally. I take these. Now nah, it's. Kind of risky. He's getting shot up by two. There is no shit. You just send this video to me. There is no shit. You said. Okay you landed. Okay. I was about to say, 
There is, how did this, how did this come to happen? Makes perfect sense. And this is what I meant with don't get too greedy and don't go for the 1 and 9. I know you want to suck on that dirty shaft. Makes perfect sense. But you're just kind of sitting in his gunners. He's dead anyway. There's like 6 people shooting at him. Don't worry about it. You're going to get your assist. He is not going to have any game impact. And you are wasting your plane. This is hella funny though. Thank you for including this. So we go back. We go and take off. And here we are. 1v5 I think you said. Yeah, it says it says it's here at the top. Hard reading is extremely hard. And where is everyone? I have no clue. I'm gonna scroll back a little bit because I went too far. Okay, we have an A36 on the left. Completely non-issue as long as we don't get below it. Or get on par with it, fighting someone else. P47 pops up. He seems to be alone from the looking around you have done. I, I want to see a little bit more looking around, especially if you are outnumbered like you are. Because someone might just appear out of thin air and he's going to suck your dick. You don't want that to happen. This guy is going hella slow. There is absolutely no reason for you to contest this head-on because he is going to send it for a head-on. You're kind of giving it to him. He's not doing it. P47 and doesn't want to go head-on. Aren't you lucky? This is done. Just climb over him. You get the kill for it. He messed up. Completely fine. Keep in mind, you can just kind of fly over to him and then dive on, on top of him. Sure, you want to have a little bit of speed. You can kind of gradually dive, so dive like somewhere in between. You pick up some speed, you close the gap quickly so he can't recover, but you're also not giving him a free ticket to just spray at you in a huddle. Yes, super safe. A little bit convoluted. That's how I play. I like to be safe. I don't like to leave my life in chance. Or two chance. Uh, he could have just tried to turn around. He was going to spray you down with 50 kills. And if one of those hits you, you are kind of boned. Again, pretty minor thing. Just a personal... Well, not really a pet peeve even. Just a personal thing. Nothing necessarily wrong with it. But that's what I noticed. So I'm going to call it out. So this guy goes absolutely sicko mode. And gets put back in a hangar. Kill number three. Perfectly fine. And... Yeah. Okay. F82. A21. Both of these are very easy pickings in the situation we are in right now. Why is that? We are out climbing the F82. We are going side, not even directly away from him. We are kind of, he's kind of cutting us off and we are still outrunning him. We are also above him. We are going 470 IES. That's good. We have energy advantage on the F82. And the A21 is at an energy disadvantage from the second we take off. So... Really not too worried about that one. I want to focus mainly on the F-82. Because he has the most amount of energy. Right here you start your turn a little bit prematurely. He's going to get very close to you now. Let's see what happens. Is he going to get it? He is not. Again, minor thing. But if you turn a little bit later. Say you outclimb this guy as well by the way. So you have the energy advantage. You are not in a hurry. So what do you want to do? Extend the gap a little bit. So I would personally climb a little bit steeper for a little bit longer. Open up the gap a little bit. And then turn in. And then this shot. Doesn't have to be as sketchy as it is right here. This could have ended you if he had good aim. Sure, not many people would hit it. But when it does, it's going to ruin your day. He's going vertical for us. So is he. You're not going straight vertical. You're going somewhat horizontal. You love to see it. Absolutely perfect. From the way you played it. You want to do this. You stall out the F-82. You turn after him. You don't want to stall yourself out on top of him. Is he going to dive away? Yes. Do you want to chase this? No. This guy is going to absolutely waste all your energy. And he's just going to dive away. This guy is clearly trying to bait you down low. You are now being baited below the A-21. The A-21 was an absolute non-issue. He's about to have an energy advantage because you dove too far. Now I'm just going to speed this up a little bit. How long are you going to chase him? Yeah, you wasted your entire chance by doing this. Because now the A21 is behind you. And even if you fight this guy, you kill him. If you, When you come out of that dogfight, you're basically dead. Now sure you might kill this guy. He's going to bait you even lower. This guy got your game ruined. Bravo, <laughs> I get it. He, uh, he won the game for his team probably. Now you're trying to probably sit on the 6. Trying your absolute hardest to kill this guy. And you might kill him. You might do. But look at that. Entire team is above you. Now I don't even need to show you this. Well you're just going to kill someone in head on. 
Good job. But you put yourself at a disadvantage when you are outnumbered. And you've kind of fumbled the bag, really. What you want to do when you see someone dive away like that. You have the energy advantage still. It doesn't matter if he climbs away, dives away, runs away. At this point, you have so much energy that it doesn't matter what this every 2 does. He is not going to contest you. The A21 is also clearly trying to contest you. So what do you want to do? Dwindle the numbers down. This guy is hanging on for dear life. You know there's an A36 coming in from the, the heavens. The, the guy that was spotted like 12 kilometers away. And you see that this guy isn't completing his turn. He is trying to run away. Let him. Just let him. This is a dogfight you will win. You will win a dogfight versus the A21 that's now directly below you. If you had now just looped over and killed him, you would have been fine. Maybe the F82 would have been a little bit quicker than you. You are fine against the F82. Just kill them. Yeah, I know that sounds very reasonable, I know. Just kill them. That's what you want to do in this game. But this guy, you wasted too much altitude, too much speed. You are at 4 kilometers going 480. 400, okay, 4 kilometers going 400 speed. Let's look at when you start killing him. Because you are going to commit even harder. So you gained, realistically speaking, right? You gained 300 kilometers an hour for 2.5 kilometers of altitude. Not worth it. You lose this in 2 turns. Absolutely not worth it. Main uh, concern here, the uh, the minor things that I mentioned earlier, like this one going up and over, and this one uh, where you uh, wait a little or go a little bit too fast with the turn in, fine. Don't have to change them, just something I noticed. But this right here, target prioritization comes back at us yet again. It happens all the time and for some reason no one wants to watch the video that I made on it. Yes, it's 50 minutes long, I understand it, it's boring, but... 50 minutes of Picasso, who doesn't want to see it? But this is super important. Because you have the fundamentals down. But the second you come into a team fight, more comes into play than just mechanics of the game. It's also a little bit of intuition and have being lucky. And maybe you thought, he's going to turn. He's going to try to reverse me when I catch him. And then I have one enemy down. But he's going to be able to outrun you. The A21 that's directly below you here will not be able to do so. So... Try to kill him, keep your altitude, energy fight the FAD2 and by the time the A36 comes in, you still have them both energy trapped. Because they're not great planes. But all in all, gotta say, pretty decent game. Other than the, well, whatever, <laughs> whatever this is. But hey, overall, you fly pretty well. Keep in mind, do not get greedy, because it got you killed twice in the same game. Now if that doesn't tell you anything... I don't know what does. Here we are again. Look at him. He is dead. Now. Let's look at the... What got you killed. Because someone actually told me that I should watch it. Now I hope that's right. Because I don't want to waste my time. Yak 9 coming in. Oh, Yak 3, sorry. And a BF 109. Now. You're already kind of done here. I'm not sure why they wanted me to watch this. Because this looks kind of kind of shitty. Uh, this is a, a basically unwinnable fight. Unless you kill the Yak-3 in a head-on. And then you somehow outturn the 1 and 9 that goes twice your speed. Personally. I don't know if I would have done the same. Probably. You need to kill him right here. But you're going too slow. And you, you're already dead. Could I have done better on one? Now, I'm going to ignore this fight altogether. Because the second this happens. We're going to scroll back a little bit. We are going to go live. Treasure hunting. I guess we can call it. This fight right here. No. You messed it up. Way before that happened. But I don't know what the actual match is like. So I'm not going to roast you just yet. Because that sounds a little bit unfair. Yak 9P. Okay, we go into a dogfight. We kill him probably. We should win this dogfight anyway, especially at this altitude. Okay, good dogfight. You just kind of dunk on him, so I'm, I don't really need to show you this. You're turning into him, that's good. Not sure how he out-energies you here, but hey. 
you probably kill him because you turn better, you stall later, you have better energy generation at this altitude. You basically clap that plane in every metric when it comes to a dogfight. So I'm not really too worried about it. You are in a Spitfire, he's in a bad yak. Okay, we land. That's, that's great. We climb away. We try to get as much altitude as possible. We try to stay near our base somewhat. Are you camping the base? Can't really tell. But yeah, you can't really do anything here. Okay. Life uh, lesson for everyone here watching. You just took off. So I can't even say you took a bad approach. You did something wrong. Maybe you had... You should have used less fuel, you used less ammo, whatever, so you didn't have to land. My only thing that I could tell you here that you should do differently is make sure that you don't have to land. I know that sounds super boring and there's really nothing to talk about here. But the, the, the fact of the matter is that this Yak-3 is holding hands with a 109 and they both have an energy advantage. Now the fact that you go for a desperation move here and try to kill them makes sense. But, the thing here is that you can actually do something. Now, this is not going to be foolproof. This is something that's probably not going to get you many results. But I would have tried to pick up speed. The second I spot this first guy, instead of trying to contest the head-on when I'm already going 260, you are not going to be able to dodge. And he is. And if you miss that head-on, you are instantly dead. So I rather go straight. The second I spot this guy, I'm diving. Not to the airfield. We are not going to dive to the airfield. If you do that, you can leave my channel. I don't care. We are diving. We are going to pick up speed. And we are going to try to dogfight these guys. Because we do outturn the Yak-3. And we do outturn the BF-109. The power generation on this plane is good enough. So it is a winnable fight. It's not a Yak-3 VK-107. Or a Yak-3U. Now the Yak-3U we can spot across the map. The VK-107, unfortunately, we cannot. Try to pick up speed. Try to 2v1 them. But if they are holding hands and they are holding hands properly, you're not winning this. Uh, pretty rough. This is a fight you should win. Don't want to go on about it too long. But in general, it took you too long. You are too low. Disadvantageous position. And you just kind of get clapped. But... Let's look at it. Let's look at what we are doing. Because right here you already should have died. Because you just kind of stalled in front of 1 and 9. And when that happens especially. I make these mistakes too. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I never die of course. Because reasons. I've never died in my life. But. You're dead right here. He's going too slow. But the second you see him missing that kind of shot. Sorry. The second you see him miss this kind of shot, you already know that if you try to 2v1 these two guys, you probably could have killed them. And you win the 5 versus the Yak, so you should be completely fine. Well, depending on the fuel load, I of course don't know what you are running. Hard to tell. And I can't tell because it doesn't show on the screen. And never do this. Never do this. Well, you could do this by trying to dive away, pick up speed. And then try to dogfight them. But instead what you are doing is. You are flying straight. And you are not doing anything. Other than give them position. You could have turned back into that G14. And you probably could have clapped him right there. He's going faster than you. You're going slower. You out him already. You would have died. If you had hit your shots of course. If you had got lucky with your damage. But right here you're not doing anything. You're just flying straight. And you're giving both of them position on your six. Now the second he starts turning back in, even though you turn better, he is still going to get the shot. Now luckily he can't aim, so I probably would have focused more on the Yak-3. But at the same time, if you kill the G-14, you can focus on only the Yak-3. You go up and over. Makes sense enough, but the 109 is still going to get the shot here. Is he going to miss everything again? You're going hella slow. I'm not sure how he is missing everything. The second time I can roast people in the, the opposing team. Going flat turn here. Don't go vertical please. Going down. Pick up speed. Try to dodge the Yak-3. Perfect sense. Flying into AA cover. It's okay I guess. Dodge him. Flat turn after the 109. Yes do it. No don't go vertical. Yeah, okay. Is this the kill shot? Okay also just completely lost track of him. Where's the Yak-3 at? Where's the Yak-3 at? Look around. There he is. Oh it's the G-14. 
and he still can't aim. It's terrific. Now, why do you not want to go that aggressively vertical when you're in that kind of position? When you go this vertical in this kind of position, they are on your six. You outturn them already by going straight vertical when you don't have the energy advantage and they have enough range to pull lead on you anyway. What you end up doing is just stall yourself out. And even the G14 is going to hit shots when you stall yourself out like that. Now you have both of them on your six. And you are in a position where you can actually kind of do something. But you go vertical. And you turn back into his guns. You killed yourself. Now you actually, you go pretty far. All things considered. The G14 absolutely messed it up four times. If, if these guys had lost this game, it would have been on uh, Minron there. Looks like a bot name even. Makes perfect sense. I'm sorry if you're watching. That's just how it is. We have Destiny here. And please look at this scenario right here. We have both of them on our six. We are going 324. We outturn both of these guys. Just kind of sit at 300. Sure, the Act 3P might be better in the raid fight. Blah, blah, blah. We don't care. In this kind of position, we have the altitude to convert into speed. And we outturn them. With speed, we outturn them. Going vertical does the opposite of outturning them. Especially if you then also turn the other way. So, keep this up. Go downwards a little bit. Maybe even cut throttle, try to cut inside of the loop, kill one and you're golden. But right here, you are kind of outturning him. You are kind of outturning him. You are kind of out. You see that he's disappearing. You are kind of outturning him. And then you turn back into his guns. And after going back into his guns, you pull straight vertical and you turn back into his guns a second time. And you absolutely kill yourself. Now, he gets super unlucky with his damage. Oh, yet again, he kind of dodging bullets here. And then the BF-109 comes in because you opened up the gap. You got hit by a 109 that couldn't hit you four angles. If he can hit you, you made yourself too easy of a target. This guy would have also turned back in looking at this angle. Uh, you kind of killed yourself. Try to go less vertical if your plane is not made to do it. You are in the plane that is absolutely terrific at low speeds. Granted, you have the shot and the position to do it. You are also just, you are just wasting energy, making it so that you can't complete your turn to get shots on them. If the rules are reversed with the uh, Spitfire on the Yak-6, you want to go vertical in the Spitfire. Because you are just going to be able to push, push, push and you'll get the shot. All the way around, you might outturn him, but if you go too slow, you're just turning in place and it doesn't do you any good. So I hope I'm not roasting you too hard. But that's what I noticed. Let's look at the... Oh, that's a bit too long. Nah, whatever. We'll look at this one. A little bit shorter. I'll look at the other two clips uh, in the future video. Now, this video I've actually watched. Hey, I'm going to be transparent with you guys. I've actually watched this one. And uh, it's actually kind of interesting. So, first thing. This pit right here is not catching us. So... Look, we are turning him. You are turning and he is still not gaining on you. You don't have to turn. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's it really. You killed yourself right here. Five seconds in. But it's not over yet. There's actually some things to take away from this one. So, we go for the turn anyway. Perfect reasoning. Going for a loop to get rid of his energy. So he's going too fast right now. He's not going to be getting the shot in the first or second turn. So that's fine. We go up and over. A little bit risky here. I, I, very sketch. But hey, you make it work. Perfectly, perfectly reasonable. This guy is going hella slow now. We are turning. And he is losing ground. He is losing ground. And then we turn in once more. Now at this point you're done. You, you don't want to go too slow. You are eventually sure you can do this. It's just turbo risky. Don't... It's... It's... I don't like this. I don't like this. Now, sure, you can make it work, but it's hella sketch. It's hella sketch. Hey, it's, it's a beautiful shot. Personally, I would go for it probably myself. Because when you do kill him... You get that absolute dopamine rush of the century. But when you come down to it. And you want to look at the best case of doing it. You either want to run away right here. Because you are out, out fasting him. Come on bruh. 
You are Sonic the Hedgehog, you are running away, you don't have to worry about it. I'm going for loop. This first loop is okay, because he is compressing. But this right here, still kind of works, because you are in the Yak Tree. And now you dive away. At this point, it's hella sketch. It's... I wouldn't risk it. And sure, you can... You can win in this scenario. But you don't have flaps. You are damaged. And it's an LF Mark 9. The only saving grace here is he's a premium Spitfire. Which means he's a premium player. So he either has two games in the thing. Or he has 6,000. Now, the first one... Hey, uh, I'll take it. I'll take it any day of the week. The second one... I'd rather not. But hey. Each their own, right? At this point, you can just run away. You don't want to turn back in. He's already aiming at us. Look at how hard he's cutting in. Now, sure, he messes up his line. So it's going to take a little bit longer for him to get the shot. Uh, the matchup is winnable, definitely. But not in this kind of scenario. Now, at this point, you're kind of good. You're kind of good. Because he messed it up. He doesn't have the shot right here. He should. Or maybe he does have the shot, but it's desync. I don't know. What's your ping? Is that 0% packet loss? 4% packet loss. Now this right here is what gets you killed. This is the kind of shit that gets you killed. If he had turned into this loop properly, you would have been dead. Let's look at the times you would have been dead. He's on your 6. This is fine. You turn in. He lines up. You're done. He doesn't, so he shoots behind us. You go vertical. He has a low stall speed on you. You don't have flaps. He's just gonna continue to sit on your six like this. Until you die. Yeah. That, same thing as with the previous Spitfire clip. Now the Spitfire is on your six. Remember what I said. The Spitfire on the six of the enemy. You want this kind of scenario. You will be able to outstall him. And you will be able to keep pulling your nose up. And even though you don't have the energy, you have the lift to keep aiming. And that's the only thing that's important here. Because at this point, you're going too slow to get out of his guns. If you had a little bit of an energy advantage, you would have rinsed this guy. Absolutely rinsed him. But you don't. And he has position. He messed up his lines a few times. This is not a great... Uh, I, I'm sorry, Ryder. I'm roasting everyone in this video. This is not an exemplary Spitfire pilot. And you still got clapped. The Spitfire LF Mark 9 matchup is winnable in the right circumstances. This is not one of them. But yeah. Sad smiley. I know. I'm sorry for bashing everyone's skull in today. I didn't have to play myself today. So I'm in very good spirits. But yeah. Uh, the sad smiley made my day a hell of a lot worse. But that's all I have for you today. I'll come back with a normal video pretty soon here. I had a hella busy week. My grandma just died. So we're getting the funeral uh, today when the video is uploaded actually. And it all took a little bit of time. So I haven't really gotten around playing the game too much. Perfectly reasonable I know. I'm not asking for pity. I'm just stating what happened. Uh, the next video might also be something a little bit like this. Where I can kind of take it easy. And just kind of sit down and roast all the people. Get my frustration out. Perfect pastime in my opinion. And uh, then we should continue back to normal. My last work day is at the end of July. And then I have another week of work throughout mid of August. And then we should be all set to actually make these videos a hell of a lot more often. And a little bit longer. Hopefully also better quality. Because I don't have to work 32 hours a week as well. As a paramedic. For the people that are going to ask 100%. Because well, when I mention my work everyone asks what do I do. I'm a paramedic. So, let's look at those. But for now, thank you all for watching. And I will see you all in the next one.